नमस्कार मुंबई आज माती वाचवा अखेर मुंबई मध्ये आलाय तर चला हे घडवून आणूया तुम्ही शहरात जा तुम्हाला तो भेटेल तुम्ही गावात जा तुम्हाला तो भेटेल तुम्ही खेड्या पाड्यात जा तुम्ही रानावनात जा तुम्ही डोंगर दऱ्यात जा तो तुम्हाला भेटेल पण तो कोण आहे अर्थातच आपला निसर्ग राजा धनगराची मेंढर गा धनगराची मेंढर हे माती वाणी काळ कुणी दुधावानी पांढर त्याला सगळे एकत्र जाऊया हे धनगराची मेंढर गा धनगराची मेंढर हे माती वाणी काळ कुणी दुधावानी पांढर हे धनगराची मेंढर गा धनगराची मेंढर काळ कुणी गोदावानी पांढर धनगराची मेंढर का धनगराची मेंढर दिसत्यात हो ही गोजीरवा निहरण हो पर माणूस लई उठ राटा हो हर काळ त्याच करण हो त्याची भूक लई मोठी हो त्याची दानत लई खोटी सुरी फिरती या त्याच्या नरड्यावरती सुरी फिरती या त्याच्या नरड्यावरती अन आई बाच्या चुका पाई बळी जाती ले धनगराची मेंढर का धनगराची मेंढर हे माती वाणी काळ कुणी दुखावानी पाठ सोसवना उतरला हो बघून एक झाड आई बा म्हणाल भांड घेऊन गेला पुढ हो घशाला परली कोरड आला पाण्यामध्ये बुडबुड बुडबुड तिथं घडू नये इपरीत घडलं तिथे घडू नये ते इपरीत सार घडल अन बाण आला घुस लाग काळ जाच्या पातूर हे धनगराची मेंढर का धनगराची मेंढर हे माती वाणी काळ कुणी दुधावानी पांढर हे धनगराची मेंढर का धनगराची मेंढर धनगराची मेंढर
धरती पर आए धन की क्या बात करो मैं मन भी शीतल बन जाए हर कण मेरी कायका हर कण मेरी कायका माटी ही माटी बोले अखिया जो बंद करो तो अरे सुन ले अरे सुन ले दोबारा से साउंड ऑफ ईशा के लिए कैन वी पुट आर हैंड्स टुगेदर कम ऑन थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच साउंड ऑफ ईशा यू हैव पुट अस इन द एब्सोल्युटली राइट मूड दिस हैज टू बी द मूड ऑफ द रूम दिस इवनिंग ओके नाउ आई हैव सम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अनाउंसमेंट्स बिफोर वी प्रोसीड विद द प्रोग्राम लाइव ट्रांसलेशन हिंदी और मराठी में हो रहे हैं दे आर अवेलेबल फॉर द इवेंट टुडे प्लीज ट्यून योर मोबाइल फोन रेडियोज इन टू एटी एट फॉर हिंदी 
अगर आप इस प्रोग्राम को हिंदी में सुनना चाहेंगे ट्यून इन टू चैनल नंबर एटी एट एंड इफ यू वुड लाइक टू चूज मराठी देन ट्यून इन टू एटी नाइन वंस अगेन एटी एट फॉर हिंदी एंड एटी नाइन फॉर मराठी नाउ इन केस यू नीड एनी ट्रांसलेशन सपोर्ट आपको कोई भी मदद चाहिए वेन इट कम्स टू ट्रांसलेशन प्लीज your most welcome to the translation help desk we will help you there okay so everybody say it with me your body my body everybody is let's try that once again okay see together it's about unity hamari awaaz bhi jo hai wo unison mein honi chahiye ek baar fir se your body my body everybody is now you are with me so the safe soil movement dosto is everybody's call and to take the safe soil movement forward with the generous contributions as you can see evidently we here are privileged to have our event sponsors geo digital life reliance industries limited and the entire geo family who have gone completely out of their way can we please put our hands together ladies and gentlemen for their undying support and we are also tremendously grateful to our national sponsor PVR along with our other partners cine media partner ufo movies and active.ai unke liye zordar taaliya these are our partners making this happen right now okay sadguru has been riding the motorcycle with all of us have been watching him with that swag which is so unique to him it's been almost 3 months now he is as we all have seen very recently braving relentless storms of rain sand snow talk about the terrain mountains heat scorching heat sadguru has driven through all of it a lone motorcyclist at the age of 65 you can keep clapping whenever you want to starting from london criss crossing through europe and central asia the middle east and now bharat he's here having more than 525 sales soil events across approximately 24500 kilometers This journey has been covered by more than 260 media outlets with thousands of television and news reports every single day the ones we see back home 74 nations are on board the movement and there has been active support from 2.5 billion people including eminent soil and climate scientists and so this is the least that i can tell you about it i think it will be better if i can share with you glimpses of some moments that the safe soil movement with sadguru has experienced so far and how the entire world sari duniya has united in the soil wave dancing to the rhythm safe soil dosto let's take a look Sadhguru you have the ability to change the world for the better if you want to say i love you to your child you must just say safe soil because it is a more committed way of saying i love you it is not about the motorcycle it's not about the journey it's not about the song it is about moving people on the planet make it happen huh Nobody spoke about soil like that guru does. It really is 
resonated with me, the message that we have to save uh, our soil. We as people have to unite and uh, to solve this. This is a celebration of human beings coming together to do what they need to do. Riding on to Italy. Italy is raining heavily tonight. And we are very happy that we are aligned in our message to a really high the profile of soils. I think there, it's a message of urgency, but it's also a message of hope. So I would really like to thank Sagburo for his leadership. An MOU to be signed between Isha Foundation and four per thousand initiative. We should all stand up and make the most impact we can to create a real change in the world. This is heartwarming to see everybody come together. Education Ministry in Germany has now come into the picture officially and asked all the children to do artwork to support Safe Soil Movement. The UNFAO said something which really deeply hurt me is the soil that we are consuming right now belongs not even to these little children, belongs to the unborn child. This is an expression of our love and responsibility for our own lives and the future lives. I love the message that he sent and how he like broadened it that it's everybody's responsibility. I think there is a great potential for a good collaboration, partnership, with the campaign Save the Soil. Sadhguru reminded me that I have a voice. He's an honest expression of his wisdom and love for humanity, I think. and his generation. Here in Palestine, wonderful to be here. I salute you and I respect your initiative. When it comes to agriculture, when it comes to soil, when it comes to soil ecology, our national borders mean nothing because microorganisms operate as a global system. Dear Sadhguru, one of the world's voices and leaders on soil conservation and land in this day and age, having him, uh, having you here is absolutely fantastic and we welcome you. Implementation has to happen on the land and land is not managed by scientists, land is managed by farmers. So it's extremely important, it must be a single point agenda, incentive based agenda, if inspiration, incentives and disincentives after a certain period of time 
is the way forward. This is my appeal to every one of you because I don't want this COP15 to end as one more convention with more paper and more paper. This must end with concrete action and action in such a way that is it's implementable. We know how much, you know, you had to do to get here. You left so many things you were doing with it. But you honor the country, you honor the people of this country. Thank you. And on behalf of the head of state, it's my pleasure. <laughs> I want to thank you very much. You know, the most important thing of what I have learned from him is that the most important thing is to live in harmony and peace within yourself. so much for being here with us, Sadhguru, on this wonderful journey. The UAE is partnering with you on safe soil, such an important cause. My dear brother Sadhguru, I would like to thank you for including the United Arab Emirates in your inspiring journey. I had a meeting with uh, Sadhguruji somewhere in uh, December, I believe. And uh, the net outcome of that whole thing is that I have earmarked funds to make good of the echo deficit of that particular year. back in India. It's a very proud moment to have amidst us the saviour of the soil. गुजरात ना तुमने इतनू कहीं सकाय के लीड लाइन में गुजरात यानी मैं ये इतनू बने इतनू जड़प थी यू आर इन गुजरात सिंस टू डेज हमारा गुजरात कैसा लगा आपको पीपल आर कूल बट द वेदर इज हार्ड <laughs> Will you promise me in the next hundred years' time, we'll make the weather also cool for future generations? exceptional uh, movement and I think now it is our responsibility to make sure that we spread that message, pass on that message and actually do something about it on the ground. Bharat Mata ki mitri 
और पूरी दुनिया में एक नया संदेश देने के लिए सदगुरु जी ने जो ये महाअभियान चलाया है आने वाले समय में हमारी नौजवान नौजवान पीढ़ियां आपके इस बताए मार्गदर्शन में चलते हुए मिट्टी बचाने के अभियान को आगे बढ़ाएगी क्या आपकी आवाज और आशीर्वाद मेरे साथ है क्या As uh, the Prime Minister has taken up the Solar Alliance, I think there's an immense opportunity after talking to various leaders around the world, I realize India and uh, the Prime Minister of India could take up the leadership of soil regeneration in India and the world. Sadhguru Ji ne jo lambi ye, yani mehnat wali yatra hai, bike pe, vaise unka bachpan se shok raha hai ye, लेकिन फिर भी काम बड़ा कठिन होता है सदगुरु जी ने यात्रा की अपने आप में बहुत बड़ा काम किया है और मुझे पक्का विश्वास है कि दुनिया को मिट्टी के प्रति स्नेह तो पैदा हुआ ही होगा लेकिन भारत की मिट्टी की ताकत का भी परिचय मिला होगा आप सबको बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं धन्यवाद एज अ कैपिटल सिटी यू हैव अ मोर इंपॉर्टेंट रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी देन एनीबडी एल्स विल यू कीप इट अप फॉर द नेक्स्ट फ्यू मंथ्स टिल दिस पॉलिसी लेट्स मेक इट हैपन और रिवर्स और सेव स्वाइल ये दोनों अभियान उत्तर प्रदेश के लिए तो अत्यंत महत्वपूर्ण और प्रेरणादायी हो सकते हैं और मुझे लगता है उत्तर प्रदेश की 25 करोड़ जनता इस पूरे अभियान के साथ जुड़ेगी इसमें कोई संदेह रहना भी नहीं चाहिए बचाओ अभियान हम सभी साथ हैं मैं आपको मध्य प्रदेश की तरफ से मध्य प्रदेश के साढ़े आठ करोड़ जनता की तरफ से मध्य प्रदेश सरकार की तरफ से मैं ये वचन देता हूं कि मिट्टी बचाओ अभियान में आपके पीछे हम कदम से कदम और कंधे से कंधा मिलाकर साथ चलेंगे First taste of monsoon as we enter Maharashtra. It's a welcome rain. Twenty-five thousand four hundred and six kilometers to Nashik. Right now, my motorcycle is raining now.
my dear friends, we have amongst us the lone rider, the one that has single-handedly taken up the cause of safe soil. The only and the one. Namaskaram Sadhguruji. And even though I'm the one who has the mic, I'm going to now turn the mic towards Mumbai. And Mumbai, I give you 10 seconds to welcome the man himself, Sadhguru. Sadhguru started his solo motorcycle journey from London on 21st March, which has taken him across 27 countries from Europe to Central Asia to the Middle East. And now our beloved Bharat, he will be covering 30,000 kilometers within 100 days. He addressed the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification COP15 conference at Ivory Coast, as well as the World Economic Forum at Davos, Switzerland. He has participated in over 525 safe soil events. The United Kingdom, Netherlands, Germany, Czech Republic, Austria, Slovenia, Italy, France, Belgium, Serbia, Slovakia, Bulgaria, Romania, Turkey, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Jordan, Israel, Palestine, Ivory Coast, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates and Oman all have hosted safe soil events. In India, after Gujarat, Rajasthan, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, and yesterday Maharashtra's first event, we all witnessed it online in Nasik today. We have reached, Sadhguru has reached Amchi Mumbai to spread environmental awareness. And the message, saving soil is necessary to maintain life on our planet. Help us, join us to spread this message on social channels. Use hashtag Save Soil and tag us at Conscious Planet. And also, like I told you earlier, share about what's happening in this room online. Let's post our experiences. Dosto, now it's time to switch gears. Sadhguru is here and it's time to invite on stage the King of Soka. We thought that would be the best way to welcome you, Sadhguru. Hailing from the Caribbean Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in the West Indies, Michelle Montano is celebrating 40 years of sharing his music with the world. Soka as known, is also known as the soul of Calypso or the sound of the Caribbean. And the sound of the Caribbean is here in Mumbai. It's a genre developed in Trinidad and Tobago. And the Soka King ladies and gentlemen, embarked on a spiritual journey during his seventh stay at the Isha Yoga Center. And it culminated with his debut Mahashivratri performance this year in the presence of Adi Yogi. I need not emphasize that he, the king of uh, Soka, has already lent his incredible voice to Safe Soil Anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, Zordar Talio Ke Saath, Swagat Kije, Michelle Montano. Mumbai, are you ready to come awake? Somebody say, say, so I come awake. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Sadhguruji, come awake before it's too late. Are we ready to come awake for Sadhguru? Come awake, come awake. 
come awake right now we need a change listen just imagine your body falling weak like the soil losing your voice unable to speak hey. watching your My guru dance. <laughs> the best dance. moment of my life. Can we do this one for the guru? Dance. Everybody ready? One, two, three, jump up now. Jump up, jump up. Jump up, jump up. Jump up, jump up. Come on, come on, come on. Dance. Here we go, come on, say.
Oh man, it's such a pleasure to be here in Mumbai. What a beautiful city, what energy. This is the largest safe soil crowd I've seen. Are we committed? Are we committed? Are we fully involved? Are we gonna save soil? We're not giving up. You gotta play this song for me. You ready? This song is called We Not Giving Up. I dedicate this song to you, Sadhguru. To all the volunteers. I have watched you all in every single city. Every single day for 100 days. Fully involved. Fully involved. Could we make some noise for the Guru? You told me. Just get to the mountain top, but focus on the climb. Focus on the climb. We're gonna show the whole world that we're not gonna quit until every voice all over the planet says, Save soil! Save soil! Come on, sister! Are you ready to dance? One! Keep moving, keep walking Don't you ever look down When you're on the right road Don't turn around, I know The road is long and rugged Yeah, 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 yeah. What you told me? You got to keep climbing that mountain Heading straight to the top Know that we're going Right down to the very last drop Cause I know We're gonna make it Save soil and don't you stop going forward. There is no turning back. I know the road is long and rugged. Yeah, yeah. SG, you got to stay faithful, hopeful, never lose sight of it. Promise yourself you ain't ever gonna quit. Cause I know. find the second song on Marshall Mumbai one find that second song this is a soil song Mumbai one find it this song was written specifically for the same soil movement and all you have to do is just sing na 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 we're going to make the people in the front get up and dance. Let's go. Play. Right there. Right there. It goes like this. Come on. Clap your hands like this. This one was written by Marge Blackman, the creator of Soka's Daughter. So when I say, na, 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 you say, na, na. Feet on 
Listen, listen, if Sadhguru could dance, could we dance? Somebody scream, web! Somebody say, whoa! Live your life, somebody said, whoa. Live your life, live your life. That's why we go live with life. Live with life, live with life. Like the happiest people alive. Live your life, live your life, live your life. Tonight, start tonight, somebody scream. I know, I know, I know. You've been on the road. You've been on your back, on the motorcycle, for all of us here on this planet to say two things, two words, one thing, save soil. It's not about the atmosphere because the atmosphere begins with soil. It's beyond the ocean because the ocean begins with soil. Okay? Listen. I am ready to turn it up. Can I turn it up even faster in here? Because I feel like you need to be warm. Let's turn it up faster, all right? This is soca music. Three, you ready? This song is called Like a Boss. Who rides the motorcycle like a boss? Who saves soil like a boss? Everybody start to jump. Jump up, jump up. Jump up, jump up, jump up, jump up, jump up, jump up. One, when I come to four, you do like this. Like you're blowing a horn, you ready? One, two, three, jump. Horns, 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 horns. We blow the trumpet for soil. Hey. Cause we're not fat enough. Listen, we don't see skin, we 
we don't see color, we see strength, we see power, we don't see race, one or the other. But you are breathing in this earth, you are my brother. Even if we fall out, we go in all out, we will never family then fall out. And then they... Could I get a jump on four? One, two, one, two, three. Family. Le, le, le. When we, we mash up, cause everybody jumping up to it. Family, le, 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 le. are you tired? Are you tired? We mash up it. We like an army, somebody scream! My name is Marcel Montano, and I'm from the West Indies. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, in the Caribbean. I am so grateful to the people of India for embracing me with such open arms. I am in gratitude, I thank you so much. This soca music is the soul of Calypso. It's the sound of the Caribbean. It was made by fusing Indian music with African music. You want one more? This one is called the Kingdom, the Soka Kingdom. But tonight we're gonna call it the Save Soil Kingdom. Are you ready? Chandu! From top, from top, from top. Find the chords. It's low. This here we go. Who ready? We now start. Get ready, day. Set a bomb start. Meet we on the way. We lining up. Ready to charge ahead. Forward is not enough. How are you to jump crop? Get to the ground now. We go into dumb town. All on the railing. So my cities we trailing. Follow the big sound. Get ready to touch down. In every nation, safe and kingdom, come down, time to show me your ways. Show me your ways. Show me your ways. Are you ready? I want to see everything in the air. One, two, jump, 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 jump. Time to beat up. Beat up. Not like this. Not like this. You got to wave. Let me see you wave, VIP. Time to show me your wave. You're born and ready for pace. I want to hear some noise. I want to hear some noise. What? Jump, jump, jump. Jump and bring it up. Jump and jump and jump and jump and Honorable, we welcome our honorable guests. We're gonna sing for our honorable guests all together. I wanna see your safe soil posters. I wanna see your hands. Mumbai, show the world and listen to Sadhguru. Say, la 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 la. Somebody say, la la la. I can't hear you, la la la. Sing it out louder. La la le 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 le. La la le 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 le. La la le le le. Everybody sing, sing. Save 
Sailo, Seva Sailo, Seva Sailo. Everybody say la 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 la. One more jump, one more jump when I'm gone. Jump, get up, get up. Time to show me your waves. Everybody win. Jump and ready for pace. Mumbai, let's go. One, two, jump, 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 jump and beat up, jump and beat up, beat up, jump and beat up, jump and beat up, beat up, yeah, 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 beat up, jump, 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 jump. DJ Major C, thank you. Thank you, Sadhguruji. Thank you to all the volunteers. Thank you, Mumbai. I love you, somebody scream. Save soil, let's make it. Ladies and gentlemen, the king of Soka just came to the land of hook steps and showed us 30,000 different hook steps. Can we make some noise once again for Michelle Montana? And it's my privilege and pleasure to, on behalf of everybody here, to welcome our dynamic clown leader who has infused new energy into Maharashtra's governance. As Maharashtra's Minister for Tourism and Environment, he has spearheaded many new initiatives to improve the ecology of our state. We warmly welcome Sri Aditya Thakreji. Namaskaram. Thank you so much for taking the time out and honoring us with your presence. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome on stage, wow, this is, you know, we all know her in a specific way, but today her introduction becomes really elaborate and has a completely new significance. She's India's most popular but loved actresses. She's an environmentalist and one of the most eminent voices supporting Safe Soil. She is also one of the biggest and most passionate supporters of the Kaveri Calling movement and has single-handedly supported plantation of close to one lakh trees, everybody, in the Kaveri Basin. And she continues to do so. Above all, she has mobilized millions of people like all of us to care and contribute for the environment. Please welcome and in fact, I must say, uh, I'd like to recognize a very special person who through her donations has planted 97,667 trees for Kaveri Calling. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, what do I call her? I have so many words for her, but we all know her as the Queen of Smiles. Please welcome on stage, Juhi Chavlaji! Namaskaram, Sadhguruji. Namaskaram, Honorable Minister for Environment and Tourism, Aditya Thakreji. Uh, and I can see our lovely friends, China, China NC. There's Anuradha ji here in the audience. Um, we have Mauni Roy, the lovely actress Mauni. And many others from our film industry and a very big namaskaram to all of you as well all the lovely audience right up to the back very very good evening so uh, after that electric performance of Michelle, you're gonna have me lecturing you please bear with this <laughs> um, normally when there's a gathering of course i haven't seen such a large gathering and i must say i'm very happy to see this fabulous turnout, Sadhguruji. 
it really shows there's a lot of people out there who do care. So one round of applause just for the audience, because this is a fabulous turnout. So normally in a gathering, when I speak about environment, I like to start with this line. This question actually, that who is it that you love the most in this world? Who is it that you love the most in this world? Abhi aaj to aap log thoda mujh se dur hai, to mein aap se question nahi kar sakti hoon, to aap ke liye mein hi uttar de deti hoon. If you're not yet married, and if, like Sadhguru ji sometimes says, those hormones haven't kicked in yet, then <laughs> you do normally say ke, I love my mother, I love my father, my parents. If you're married, like me, and children, unflinchingly you'll say, I love my children the most in this world. And here I just want to remind everybody, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. And sadly, until we pollute the last river, poison the last bit of air, and cut down that last tree, do we realize that our children cannot eat money. The alarming rate at which all of us are today using, abusing, and polluting the earth, we are hurtling towards an imminent disaster. And here for one few seconds, I just want you to pause and think about what that could be like. Just a few days ago, there was an article in the midday. You know, Sadhguruji, we have thousands and thousands of flamingos which come to our creeks. Toxic that it is killing the fish and it is poisoning the flamingos. Now, it doesn't just stop there. That water is seeping into our soil. It is also going into the oceans. It's going to pollute everything, and that comes back to us. You know, just a few years ago, we used to make these films on plastic, you know, <laughs> Aditya, when we were very active about plastic. So my assistant and myself, we were looking through videos, trying to find bits of, you know, documentaries to pick up from. And we found this one old farmer, old, and he was saying in Hindi, when he was a child, jab wo unke bachpan mein, masti karne wo log yamuna ji mein jate the, kood ke swimming karne, to kehte hain ki humare parents, humare bade hum se kehte the, pehle naha kar, phir yamuna ji mein jana. Yani ki apni itni si gandagi bhi vahaan par mat le kar jana. And then he said, ki jab manushya asabya tha, to paryavaran ek tam saaf tha. Ab manushya sabya ho gya, aur paryavaran satya naas ho gya. Earlier this year, Isha Foundation invited me to come and see the, the farms from, you know, I had been helping Kaveri calling, as she mentioned, and it's been wonderful. Uh, so, while I would ask people to sponsor trees, and I would also sponsor them, some of them would just say, "Yar, kar to rahe, magar ped lag kahan rahe hain?" I said, "Lag rahe hain, kahin to lag rahe." So, when Isha Foundation asked me to come and visit those farms, I went very willingly because I wanted to see also for myself, and. First of all, I want to say that the, the volunteers did such a wonderful job of arranging that whole visit for me. It really, it was beautiful. And the farm that I visited, one of the farms, and then I, there the farmers spoke to me, I spoke to them. It was, it was a revelation. Um, how agroforestry has changed the fortunes of those farmers. And this farm that I went to, the first one, there a young lady, she has studied um, engineering um, 
and uh, she um, she was now taking over from her father. So, um, yeah, she said that, you know, I, at first she was very insecure because like all farmers, you're so dependent on nature. But now after this intervention from Isha Foundation and this introduction to agroforestry, she is now secure. So at that moment, I didn't understand what she said exactly. After I looked through her farm, understood what it was, and I went back home, I realized, oh my gosh, she had more wealth standing on her land than I have in my bank today. And I was so excited to come to Isha um, Ashram straight after that and meet Sadhguruji and say, Sadhguruji, this is a movement, please, which needs to spread all across India. It is so, so good for the farmers, so good for the soil, and so good for the economy. Um, at that time, when I was at the, the ashram, I had the good fortune. Um, Sadhguruji invited me to have breakfast with him and Radhe. And uh, I could see that at that time, people had mentioned to me that the Save Soil movement is going to be happening and there's a journey being planned, but I couldn't understand it. It's like, what's going on? And at the office of Sadhguruji, there were calls flying thick and fast between heads of states and Sadhguruji. Something was going on. At that time in conversation with Sadhguruji, he just, at one point, he was talking about safe soil and the, the journey, and he looked at me straight and he said, you know, I don't know if I'm going to come back from this. Sadhguruji, do you remember you said this to me? You said, I don't know if I'm going to come back from this. And I was baffled. Because it's like, Sadhguruji is saying something like this, what happened? I mean, is, is this what it is? I mean, what's, what is this? And then, as the months have passed and we have seen your journey, and we have seen how perilous it was, and how you have traveled all those 30,000 kilometers through rain, through heat, through snow, through rugged mountains, through traffic, and attended events. And there has been not a day of rest. Apparently, he has traveled through nights riding on his bike to make it in time for events. Nothing ever got postponed or canceled. I'm not being given much time, so I will just say just a few things from here that, you know, okay, let that be. I think we are going to see the journey for ourselves, I'm sure, and I hope that Isha Foundation will be showing it on the screen for us to realize what a Herculean task you took and you have completed, and here you are, safe and sound with us. Thank you, Sadhguruji. <laughs> We do need you. There's a lot of work still to be done. And uh, yes, there is no replacement for you as yet. So please hang in there with us and make us do what you want because I know what you want is not for yourself or personal glory. It is for all of us. And it is for all our children whom we love the most. Thank you is just two little words. And I feel small just being able to only do that much, saying thank you. I just want to express from all of us, from that end right up to here, all of us, our deepest gratitude. And I think, I think words, like I said, are not enough. Let us all get on our feet and give Sadhguruji and all the volunteers of Isha Foundation a standing ovation for what they have done. And let those, let, let the applause not stop. Thank you, Sadhguruji. Thank you very, very much. My dear friends, Juhi Ji giving us Lot of not just food for thought, but food for action. Can we please put our hands together for Juhi Chawla Ji? Thank you so much.
envisioned by Sadhguruji, Project Samskriti offers classes on Indian classical arts, including music, dance, and Kalari Payattu, which is a martial art form. These intricate arts have been employed for thousands of years as spiritual processes. And the artists today that you're going to witness on stage have invested in these arts from the age of seven, not as a hobby, but as a way of life. We're eager to behold their performance, which will begin with an offering by Radhe Jaggi, a classical Bharatnatyam dancer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome them with a round of applause. Project Sanskriti is an endeavor to nurture and impart India's classical arts. Designed by Sadhguru, it offers programs to learn powerful chants, music, Bharatnatyam, and Kalari Payata, an ancient martial art form conducted by the rigorously trained students and alumni of Isha Sanskriti. The art forms are imparted in their most profound form as possibilities for inner growth and transformation. Project Samskriti is not today's idea, it's been in incubation for nearly twenty-five years. So this is an effort not to save the art form alone, but to bring up humanity to a higher level of existence within themselves. Oceans with hair of open sky and a body, the ground that we walk upon. Mother Earth, our source and sustenance. Time is ticking away. As we exploit this gentle source of life, to build our lives, our comforts, our luxuries, we have ignored her call, her plea. Time is ticking away. It's time to reinvigorate and celebrate this gentle mother who has birthed us, fed us, and one who will embrace us into her bosom in our death. Oh Mother, in celebration of your grandeur, in concern for your well-being, and in love with all that you are, we dance in tune to your rhythm as we are just a part of you.
Beneath my feet, your soil. When you rise, you become a tree. Again, you fall as a leaf. Who are you? You come up as a crop. You give me life as food. Whether I am alive or dead, you are the only refuge. Who are you? You come as water. You come as milk. You come as honey. Who are you? If I eat, it is soil. If I breathe, it is soil. If I die, it is soil. Oh, my mother, who are you? In the root, there is a stalk. In the stalk, there is branch. In the branch, leaves, bud, flower and fruit, all rooted in soil. That is not our making. The soil, the very soul of all life, shall neither perish nor is created, but in a constant turnaround. A tree and a termite hill, the rough hide of an elephant and the fine silk of the spider, the beast that you kill and the people that you love, all a recycle of soil, soil and soil.
depleted soils will not quench the fire of hunger. Unquenched hunger can burn the very world. This is a generational responsibility. Save soil. Let's make it happen. And thank you so much for this beautiful story and this beautiful act. Now, if I were to introduce the next artist that's going to make their way to the stage, I'd say two brothers, one voice. Any guesses? Okay, but I have the pleasure to formally introduce them. So I'm going to tell you that here are two Bollywood composers who've practically won all the awards, be it IFA or Filmfare. And today they are here to present a very special collaboration for the Safe Soil movement in which our dearest Sadhguruji has sung as well for the very first time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you Meet Brothers, Kushbu Greval, joining Sadhguruji, presenting to us Bandeya. Namaskaram, everybody! Namaskaram, Sadhguru. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Isha Foundation, for having us here. It's an absolute privilege to be singing the Save Soil song, which a lot of you might be hearing for the first time. So presenting a brand new composition by Meet Bros and Rashmi Viragji is right here, who's written the lyrics. Sachet Parampara, unfortunately, could not be present here to sing the song. So we're presenting. Are you going to sing with us? Chuk, chuk, chuk. Woohoo! Namaskaram everybody, you guys are going to love it because this one is not just Meet Bro singing. Sadhguru singing live for the first time, his own part and his own voice for the song that we guys have done, Bandhya. Somebody has to give him a mic because he's going to be singing. And we know you don't have to come here, Sadhguru, wherever you are, you are the rock star. No, so we'd love it if you come and join us. I mean, that'll be great. But again, the choice is yours. You have such a song, you have no option. Now you're a singer also, you're a multi-talented, the most versatile, multi-talented person. But I, before we start singing, we have to share with you, you know, the first time when somebody tells you, you have Sadhguru coming in a studio to sing. You know, somebody, someone we've loved, someone we are obsessed with. So firstly, you are nervous. And when he comes in the studio and he sings like a rock star for one hour, he sings and he goes. And then we, in the end, we add a little, you know, auto tuner. And, he call, and we get a call and he sing, that's not my voice, please don't use any auto tuner. I'm organic and I'm going to sing without the auto tuner. So there's no auto tuner in his voice. That's Sadhguru for you. And we're going to see right now when he sings with us this one, right Sadhguru? So make some noise for singer Sadhguru tonight. Woohoo! Alright guys, come on. We're going to take the liberty to sing your part day. first. And then we'll have you on the stage. Can we have some more track here, please? Let us please sound. Wanna see hands up in the air, Mumbai? Yeah, a little more. Oh, the love of the people is one voice. The love of the people is one voice. The love of the people is one voice. 
नाज है आज मिल गई है अपने पंख को परवाज है इन रंगों में रंग है जिसका आज हो जाना है उसका रे कुछ नहीं मांगे ये किसी से है मगर हम सारे उसी से रे सुन लेना बंदे आ बंदे आ माटी अनमोल है बंदे you can have for a safe sal campaign that's rashmi birag for you and the song is released on t series you can go and check out the song on t series and the most beautiful part is sadguru is going to step you as a singer in this song moni is going to sing it to one line ha bande aa bande popular demand everybody wants you to sing one more time wherever you are please sing one more time tera mera kya hai bandeya ye sab kudrat hai jo paale tu usko bhule kaise fitrat hai paao 
के नीचे ये जो ना हो पाव फिसल जाएगा आज अभी से ठान ले बंद या कल ना फिर आएगा सतगुरु सतगुरु electricity but nobody told us to save soil thank you sadguru for bringing such an important matter to the forefront save soil everybody and before we go sadguru we have a very popular song it's called baby doll we've changed it just for the save soil campaign it goes like just give the ee -E. we've done our own version of uh, save soil ye duniya ye duniya pittal di ye duniya pittal di ओ साटी सोइल है सोने दी 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 थैंक यू वेरी मच साटी सोइल है सोने दी सेफ सोइल एवरीबॉडी थैंक यू सो मच वी लव यू साइनिंग ऑफ मी ब्रोस थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू जोई जी जोई जी वी लव यू वी रियली लव यू थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू दिव्यांका लव यू गाइस यार थैंक यू Everybody can we please put our hands together once again for Meet Brothers and Kushbu Grewal The Conscious Planet the Save Soil movement it's an effort to save our planet's soil from extinction as occupants of this planet this shared planet I have a question to ask and I want a loud and clear answer Are we going to be a regretful or are we going to be a responsible generation <laughs> wonderful thank you very much just presenting to you a video that explains the science behind safe soil let's take a look we are talking about climate change carbon emissions and global warming and various other aspects but we are not addressing soil soil is the habitat upon which zillions of life thrive once there is no richness in soil then you have forsaken the planet in many ways every responsible scientist in the world and the un agencies are clearly saying we have only 80 to 100 harvests left that means approximately 45 to 50 years of agricultural soil left on the planet by 2045 we will be producing 40% less food than what we are producing right now and our populations will be 9.3 billion people the food shortages that could manifest in the next 25 years the consequences of that is unimaginable civil wars will unfold across the world once there is food shortage what we are facing now is soil extinction why is soil becoming extinct where is it going away what is happening to our soil we must understand if you add organic content to sand sand will turn into soil if you remove all organic content from the soil soil will become sand In normal agricultural soil the minimum organic content should be between 3 to 6%. The most minimum is 3%. At least this minimum to keep the soil alive, to keep the soil as living soil is a must. Agricultural soils across the world the depletion is so heavy in most countries more than 50% of the top soil is already gone in the last 100 years. the nutrient levels have dropped significantly the level of micronutrients you would get from your food in early 20th century 
to what you are getting from the same food now has dropped ninety percent. If you ate one orange in 1920s, what you got from it, now in 2020, if you have to get the same, you will have to eat eight oranges. This is what we have done to our food. Soil is the biggest ecosystem on the planet, and so few people know anything about it. One teaspoon of healthy soil probably contains more microbes than there are people on Earth. The microbial life in the first 12 to 15 inches of topsoil is the basis of our existence. It is this magic beneath our feet which has produced the life that we are. This first 12 to 15 inches of soil is the basis of life for 87% of life on this planet, including you and me. We have to begin to recognize that what we call our soil, Mother Earth, is a living organism. Open soils, ripped open by plowing, open to sunlight, is the basis of destruction of microbial life. So the focus should be on agriculture, the focus should be on seeing that land is under shade as much as possible. Some kind of shade, grasses, herbs, bushes, trees. Conscious Planet is launching Save Soil Movement to bring about a policy change to regenerate soil. As a part of this, <laughs> I'm 65 and I'm riding 30,000 kilometers, a lone motorcycle journey, 30,000 kilometers across 24 nations to activate support from the citizenry to assure the governments long-term investments will be appreciated. So it's extremely important that soil regeneration is enshrined in the policy of every government on the planet. We must change the narrative on the planet that soil is a wealth, a legacy we have received from previous generations and we have to pass it on as living soil for future generations. We are in a cusp of time, if you do the right things now, in the next 15 to 25 years, we can significantly turn this situation around and regenerate the soil. But if we allow this to progress like this for another 30 to 40 years, after 40 years, if we attempt this, then it could take 150 to 200 years because that much loss of biodiversity would have happened. From 21st of March for 100 days, the whole world, every human being on the planet should talk soil. So we must hear the word soil, save soil everywhere to see that the narrative on the planet changes towards the most vital aspect of our life, the soil. Each one of you should reach as many people as you can to make this happen. Many global leaders and influencers are already participating in the movement. Be a part of this and let us make it happen. सदगुरु जी ने यात्रा की दुनिया को मिट्टी के प्रति स्नेह तो पैदा हुआ ही होगा लेकिन भारत की मिट्टी की ताकत का भी परिचय मिला होगा Save our soil. Save soil. Sadhguru, <laughs> save soil, my friend. Save soil, let's make it happen. Antigen Barbuda is part of the Save Soil mission. We commend you for what you're doing. That is why we are happy to sign the MOU. The science and philosophy that backs the thought behind movement is tremendous. We welcome you in Hyderabad and please show us the right direction towards policy. Save soil, let's make it happen. It is time to save the soil. Save soil, let's make it happen. We know what we must do, so let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make this happen. Let us make it happen. Let's, let's make, make it happen. happen. Let's make it happen. Save soil, let's make it happen.
Sadhguru, thank you for what you're doing. Dear Sadhguru, one of the world's voices and leaders on soil conservation. As for the Muslim World League, we are completely ready to help you. This is my appeal to every one of you because I don't want this COP15 to end as one more convention with more paper and more paper. This must end with concrete action, an action in such a way that it is implementable. It is implementable and we will see a distinct change in the coming few years. The movement that you are taken up as a soul scientist, I could not expect any more God's blessing than that. Your leadership, Sadhguru, and this campaign is so important. Uh, you've inspired me to think about soil very differently. I love what you say that we're all part of the solution and we all have a role to play. I request all of you to come together and join the Conscious Planet movement to save soil. So this is a perfect confluence of, 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 uh, of how we see things and the importance of, of, of the soil. Save the soil. Our soil needs nourishment. Save soil. Let us make it happen. We really welcome the Save Soil movement. Save soil. Let's make it happen. I salute you, your energy and your dedication and my full support of what is needed from the Palestinian side. To honor the people of this country, thank you. <laughs> I want to thank you very much. Sadhguru Ji ne yatra ki apne aap mein bahut bada kaam kiya hai. Aur mujhe pakka vishwas hai ki duniya ko mitti ke prati sneh to paida hua hi hoga. लेकिन भारत की मिट्टी की ताकत का भी परिचय मिला हो। Soil is not our property. It's a legacy that's come to us from previous generations, and we must pass it on as living soil for future generations. This truly is the final call for saving the soil. And I want you to hold on to that thought while it's my absolute privilege and pleasure to welcome to the stage to address us all, Honorable Minister for Tourism and Environment Government of Maharashtra, Shri Aditya Thakreji. आदरणीय सदगुरु ईशा परिवार मी आपल्या सर्वांचं महाराष्ट्रामध्ये आणि मुंबईमध्ये स्वागत करत आहे गुरुजी आज दोपहर को आप जब घर आए तो ऐसा लगा की कोई रॉकस्टार घर आ रहा है लेकिन जब हम बातें करने शुरू हुए जब आप मुख्यमंत्री महोदय से मिले सेफ सॉइल जो मैं अभी भी सुन रहा था कई अन्य लोग बोल रहे थे वीव ऑलवेज हर्ड इन आर स्कूल अबाउट वॉटर बींग लाइफ वीव ऑलवेज हर्ड अबाउट एयर पोल्यूशन वॉटर पोल्यूशन वीव हर्ड अबाउट एवरीथिंग एल्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम सॉइल टूडे गुरु जी यू हैव टोल्ड अस एंड टॉट अस दैट सॉइल इज ऑयल सॉइल इज गोल्ड एंड सॉइल इज लाइफ In your 100 days journey spanning over about 30000 kilometers every place that you've gone you've seen various climatic conditions you've seen various people various heads of state various people who follow you who revere you but i think what is most important today is you are speaking about something that is not just relevant to the past to the future to us but to life as we understand it I was just thinking going you know while watching the videos while hearing you talk and on the on the screen today 
and of course through the songs. And I'm sure that you know the Meat Brothers here. Even you felt the pressure. You know, thank you for performing. But you also feel pressure to perform in front of the rock star. I had an advantage when you called me that I was wearing a mask. So my voice probably was sounding like your voice. But today. मैं यही सोच रहा था कि हम जब देखते रहते हैं दुनिया में खोजते रहते हैं अन्य सारे प्लांट्स पे जाते हैं और खोजते हैं कि यहाँ पानी है कि नहीं लाइफ है कि नहीं मुझे लगता है थोड़ा भी परसेप्शन चेंज करना चाहिए थोड़ा हमारा फोकस चेंज करना चाहिए यही ढूंढना चाहिए कि मार्स हो वीनस हो मून हो वहाँ पानी तो शायद हो सकता है लेकिन सॉइल है कि नहीं जिस जगह में सॉइल मिल, जा, मिल जाएगी वहाँ में लाइफ मिल जाएगा वहाँ जीव मिल जाएगा कभी कभी ऐसे होता है कि हम इंटरनेट पे ढूंढते रहते हैं बोलते रहते हैं कभी कभी यूट्यूब पे देखते रहते हैं गुरुजी हम आपकी वीडियोस और महाशिवरात्रि के वीडियोस काफी सालों से देखते आए हैं जब भी आपको स्क्रीन पे देखते हैं तो नमन करते हैं आदि योगी का जब स्टैचू देखते हैं वहां नमन करते हैं लेकिन मुलाकात कभी पहले हुई नहीं थी शायद यही एक वक्त आना था आपका बुलावा आना था जब हम डायवोर्स में पहली बार मिले और आपने मुझे कहा कि सॉइल के लिए कुछ करना चाहिए अगर ऐसे देखे तो जूही जी ने भी कहा है कि हम सारे लोग जो है जब तक हम लास्ट रिवर को पोल्यूट नहीं करते जब लास्ट पेड़ को नहीं काटे आखिरी पेड़ को नहीं काटे हम सोचेंगे कि तभी हम सोचेंगे कि पैसे को हम खा नहीं सकते और ये सही है कभी कभी ऐसे बोला जाता है कि पॉलिटिशियंस पैसे को खा जा सकते लेकिन पॉलिटिशियंस भी पैसा नहीं खा सकते तो कोई भी तो कोई भी ये ना सोचे कि हम जो भी हमें सॉइल देती है हमारी मिट्टी जो देती है वो छोड़ के कुछ और कहीं खा सकते हैं लेकिन गुरुजी जब आपके बुलावा आया हमने जब आपसे मुलाकात की डायवोर्स में वो कांग्रेशनल सेंटर में और तभी आपने मुझसे कहा कि जून 12 को मैं आ रहा हूं मुंबई आ रहा हूं तो हमने कहा कि स्वागत तो करना ही आपका लेकिन मैंने आपको पूछा कि कैसे पधार हो और जब आपने बाइक कहा तो मैं सोचने लगा कि गुरु कैसे बाइक पे आएंगे ये पूरा जो एक जर्नी होता है हम सब हम तो प्लेन में जाते हैं आठ घंटे की जर्नी हो और थक जाते हैं कभी कभी सोचते हैं कि चलो अगले दिन रेस्ट ले लेकिन आज भी जब आपसे मिले तो एक प्रेरणा लेके आगे चल रहे हैं कि हेड्स ऑफ स्टेट हो कोई भी इंसान हो महिला हो पुरुष हो हमें काम करना है वो खुद के लिए करना है एंड जूही जी वॉट यू सेड इज ट्रू दट टिल नाउ वी फॉलो इज हर्ट दैट वट एवर वी इनहेरिटेड इज नॉट फ्रॉम द पास इज अबाउट बोरोइंग फ्रॉम द फ्यूचर बट वट आई टेल एवरी वन वेन आई स्पीक अबाउट द प्लान वट आई टेल एवरी वन अबाउट doing something for the planet we're not doing something for the planet we're not doing a big favor by protecting our soil or water or air we're not doing it for the planet we're doing it for ourselves i think the first thing we need to understand and realize is in a generation before me or two generations before us maybe 40 or 50 years before we came onto this planet it was easier and it was okay to say that we're doing this for the future generations we've come to a point of inflection we've come to a critical point on our planet today that if we don't do it for this very generations for the generation that we are in we might not even see the future generation that is what our situation is today we do not have the luxury of time to believe that we can go on doing something for the planet maybe 10 years 20 years 30 years down the line and the planet will be still okay with it we have to act and we have to act today that is the point that i'm trying to make here we are in the midst of a climate crisis the other thing of course is we believe that we are doing a big favor on the biodiversity we are doing a big favor on the plants and trees the animals the birds mammals all of you know the nature around us by doing something by planting a tree or we doing a big favor on someone else or planet that you know we doing something for our planet and for our nature we not doing a big favor on it we are doing it for ourselves if you remember a sto small story that we've always heard about in our school textbooks we've always known as basic science is billions of years ago before we came onto the planet there was another species that existed on this planet way stronger than us i don't know about the intelligence but yes they were pretty intelligent they were dominating the planet and they were known as dinosaurs no one thought that there would be planet without them no one thought that there could be life more stronger than them 
And the minute there was a meteor strike or whatever science says, they were wiped out and the planet has gone on, gone on very beautifully without them. So if we think that without the human race, the planet cannot exist, we are wrong. The planet may exist even beautifully without us. And that is a thought I want to see in your minds. I'm not going to take much time because we're here to listen to Sadhguru. Sadhguruji, we're here to take inspiration from you. But one basic thing I've realized today in our meeting and today while sitting next to you is we are soil and that is where we come from and that is where we eventually go. Whatever we treat as our bhumi, wherever we go in the world, we remember two types of bhumis, our janma bhumi and our karma bhumi. Jaham paida hote hai aur jaham hamara karma karte hai aur aage jate hai, successful bante hai, paisa kamate hai, shoharat kamate hai, naam kamate hai. Lekin parso bhi mein ek news pe एक वीडियो देखा हमारे राष्ट्रपति जी कोविंद साहब जब अपने गांव पहुंचे अपने घर पहुंचे तब झुक के उन्होंने मिट्टी को नमन किया और सर पे लगाया यही मिट्टी हमें बनाती है और इसी मिट्टी को हमें बचाना है तो हम दुनिया में कहीं भी हो कहीं भी हो कितनी भी दौलत शौरत नाम कमाए कितनी भी सक्सेस पाए हमें जाना तो उसी मिट्टी में है तो उस मिट्टी का कितना ख्याल रखते हैं मुझे आज ये कहना है कि यही हमारी सोच है और इसे हमें आगे लेके जाना है गुरुजी, थैंक यू सो मच फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी फॉर गिविंग मी द ऑनर ऑफ बीइंग अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस मूवमेंट ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ महाराष्ट्र वाइल कमिंग हियर ऑनरेबल चीफ मिनिस्टर उद्धव ठाकरे जी हु हैज कमिटेड हिमसेल्फ टू सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट बी प्रोटेक्टिंग द आर ए फॉरेस्ट एट एकर्स इन मुंबई कॉलिंग इट अ फॉरेस्ट डिक्लेयरिंग इट अ फॉरेस्ट बी प्रोटेक्टिंग more than 15000 hectares of wetlands as mangrove and putting it as dedicated mangroves or even recently 629 692 rather square kilometers of conservation reserves we are committed to this cause and i'm here to say that maharashtra aple sobat hai isha foundation jo sobat hai and safe soil jo sobat hai dhanyawad jai hind jai maharashtra vande matra Shri Aditya Thakre ji thank you so much for joining us as being the voice of urgency for safe soil thank you very much at this time i request dear sadguru to please do the honor of launching majhi vasundhara abhiyan 3 an initiative by maharashtra ministry of tourism and environment spearheaded by our honorable minister for tourism and environment shri aditya thakre ji i also request mrs manisha patankar maiskar principal secretary environment and climate change namaskar <laughs> mr sudhakar bobre mission director majhi vasundhara mission to please come on the dais for the launch of majhi vasundhara abhiyan 3.0 like the any button thing Majhi Vasundhara Abhiyan is a unique and integrated first ever exercise in India focusing on the five elements of nature or the Pancha Mahabhutas earth water air fire and akash it is structured to focus on three important pillars of climate action carbon carbon sequestration reducing greenhouse gas emissions and promoting green lifestyle among citizens thank you very much for doing the honors thank you very much now as part of the safe soil movement on this historic day ladies and gentlemen at mumbai the maharashtra government and isha outreach shall be signing a memorandum of understanding to rejuvenate maharashtra soil this moment is the milestone step towards improving soil health in the state with the safe soil movement and the state government working hand in hand
Thank you very much to our guests. Thank you so much for doing the honors. Yes, let's capture this moment. <laughs> Mumbai, come on, a resounding applause for a historic moment. Now is the time to save soil and this is the beginning. Everybody, raise your placards up there. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Thank you, ma'am. Sadhguruji, oh. Hello. Yep. talk about soil or you? <laughs> when I... What is that? <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> in the last two and a half years, I've been meeting so many agricultural ministries, bureaucrats involved in that aspect of the governance across the world, environmental ministers, soil scientists. And what I realized was everybody knows what is a problem. I'm, I'm talking about people who hold responsible positions in that aspect of life. Everybody knows the problem, everybody generally knows the direction of the solution. Then I was wondering, everybody knows the problem, everybody knows the solution, what are they waiting for? Then I realized they're waiting for, they're waiting for an idiot to bell the cat. It's always like this in the villages. If something dangerous has to be done, something unpopular has to be done, you catch hold of the village idiot, always. Then I thought, here I am. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, 
Soil was a very unpopular subject just three months ago. When I was in London, a lady journalist came to interview me and said, Sadhguru, like this, Sadhguru, this is the most unromantic thing that I could think that you would do in your life. Soil, of all the things in the soil, you think people, if somebody is going to support you in this, do you really believe this? I said, uh, it's not about whether somebody is going to support me or not, it needs to be done. Whether people have that much sense or not, this is a test <laughs> Then another question is always, why motorcycle? Oh, Sadhguru loves motorcycles. <laughs> no, no, I must tell you this, from probably from the… I started riding when I was twelve and rode on till about twenty-seven, twenty-eight years of age. After that, thirty-two years, I never got on a motorcycle, never even thought of one. Yes, my work kept me busy. It's only during Rally for Rivers when I was in Bangalore, uh, because in that area, that region, people know about my riding in the past. For about four and a half years, I literally lived on a motorcycle at that time. They said, Sadhguru, you must ride. I thought, after thirty-two years, am I going to ride once again? I… I was saying, hey, do I need to really ride? What's the point of this? They brought a motorcycle and said, you must ride. I sat on it and I realized, I have not… I have not lost a day. So since then, I've been traveling only on motorcycles everywhere, both in India and outside. Because uh, also this pandemic came and everybody said, you must keep social distance. I thought the best way is to ride fast on a motorcycle, lot of social distance. <laughs> and uh, two and a half, nearly three years, two and a half years since the pandemic broke out, probably I'm one of the few that even the damn virus has not shown any interest in me. <laughs> Never got me <laughs> So there are many aspects to life which we are ignoring in serious ways, for which uh, there is a price, already we are paying the price, pandemic is one of them. When we talk about pandemic, we must understand, you can give it whatever names you want. Essentially, it's a respiratory tract, infe tract infection. You don't need an expert virologist. A simple doctor will tell you that in your food, if there is no vitamin A, vitamin B6, B12, vitamin D, vitamin E, iron, foliate, zinc, magnesium, you will be far more susceptible to respiratory tract infections, this is a known fact. Today, these micronutrients, in most countries it's not been measured, so we don't know exactly what's happened. But in United States, in one century, from the beginning of twentieth century today, the drop in micronutrients in vegetables and fruits is ninety percent, ninety. And you see, one of the most affluent nations, worst hit by the pandemic. One important aspect is lack of nourishment in the food that you eat. You may be eating good food, you may be eating expensive food, but is it strong is a question mark, big question mark. Is it strong enough to make this life a strong life? When I say strong, I'm not asking… I'm not talking about only do you have pumped up muscles or not. A life has to have its strength. The life process is strong within you. Well, suddenly in the last two, three years, everybody is talking about it. What is happening in your gut is more important than what's happening in your brain. <laughs> if you have ever been to an Ayurvedic doctor or a Siddha Vaidya or even come to a yoga program, if you complain about anything, <laughs> if you have uh, any kind of problem, even psychological problems, First thing is, we will purge you because a clean colon and health are so directly related. 
But the problem is, it has to go through a billion dollar research process. Everybody has to live. <clears throat> Only then it becomes real. Uh, you know, like somebody was telling me, in the United States uh, that year, uh, I'm talking about fifteen, twenty years ago, uh, I was speaking to a doctor and the big problem of uh, irritable bowel syndrome. I said, what is it? You got irritation in the wrong place. <laughs> uh, I said, I'll solve this. This twelve billion dollars you're spending on some research and something else, you give half of it to me, I will solve it for you with a simple suggestion and it'll be over. I'm saying, things that we have known forever, unfortunately, we are piece by piece rediscovering it. It has to come from a prestigious university, otherwise it's not true. Why am I talking about this now? Because in the month of January, COP26 happened. I don't know if Aditya also went there. So, two weeks, the whole world assembles to discuss climate change, global warming and what not. And everybody has a role and all kinds of activists on the street screaming and inside people talking endlessly for two weeks. And the head of that organization which runs this convention, I meet and ask what happened in COP. Great Sadhguru, but on paper. These are his words. I said, why are you saying this? Really Sadhguru, very successful but just on paper. I said, what's the point? Paper is also one of the problems. More paper and more paper, what is the point? I met at least four to five environment ministers representing different nations. Every one of them telling me, two weeks we were there, we did not hear the word soil. Why is it? Because if you knock on oil industry, it spills dollars. If you spill an automobile industry, it'll spill money. If you try to knock on the farmer, you will get beaten up. So nobody wants to talk about soil because there is no money in it. Do you get it? <clears throat> if you want to address climate change, if you're serious, if you want to address global warming, don't… don't go by my words. It's a monsoon is coming, you may not feel it so much, but anyway, you will still feel it. Tomorrow, go somewhere in an open space. Where there is open land, where there is no vegeta vegetation, if you don't have any meters and stuff, just with your hands, just feel the soil, how hot it is. If there is somewhere little grass growing, feel the soil, how it is. If there is bushes and other things covering, just feel the soil how it is. If there are large trees, feel the soil how it is. You will know what is climate change. If I make you stand in hot sun in the summer and take you under the shade of the tree, you know what is climate change, four to six degrees difference right there. The soil temperatures from open bare soils to soil with lot of vegetation and microbial activity, the difference can be ten to twelve degrees. And we don't talk about soil, we talk about climate change. Everybody is interested in catching those carbon dioxide molecules. I thought you breathe… you need oxygen to breathe, hello? You want to catch oxygen or carbon dioxide? No, all the activists want to catch carbon dioxide. There is a reason. I'll not go into the politics of it, because for Save Soil Movement, I need all those people. <laughs> Every life, everything that you have ever seen as life, let me explain to you, what are the lives you could have seen? You could have seen a tiny worm, a little larger worm, a tiny insect, a larger insect. You've seen a bird eating those insects and plants and trees, animals, little ones, tiny little ones and big ones like an elephant and human beings. This is all the… and fish and other stuff. 
this is all the life you have seen. Hello? Have you seen any other life? This is all the life you have seen. All this I mentioned, all these lives, whether worm, insect, bird, tree, animal, human, every one of them come from just fifteen to eighteen inches of topsoil. This is the cream of this planet. You know, these days maybe everything is coming to you, uh, <laughs> being delivered to where you by some app. But in your homes you might have watched your mother, if they handle the cream, they handle it gently. Hello? This is the way to handle the cream? Nobody digs it up with a pickaxe. No, very gently. That is how everybody handles the cream, because cream is precious. It may be right on the top, but it's the most precious aspect of that. So what you call a soil or topsoil is the cream of this planet. It would take six hundred to eight hundred years to make one inch of soil if there was no human footprint. With the hum present level of human footprint, if you want to create one inch of soil, it will take thirteen thousand years. Hello? Thirteen thousand years to create one inch of topsoil. But in the last forty to fifty years, maybe seventy years, nearly fifty-two percent of the world's topsoil is gone. Gone. Gone means where did it go away? The simple thing is this. You're growing a crop. Let's say you grow paddy or sugarcane or wheat or vegetable, fruit, whatever. If out of this land something comes up like this, this means at least fifty to sixty percent of this is just soil that's come up, right? If this weighs hundred grams, at least fifty grams of soil has come up. So if I take this away and put it somewhere in the marketplace or in my belly or somewhere else, that means that much less in the soil. When I do this for thirty, forty, fifty years' time, it's gone. Does it take some genius to understand this, I'm asking? Hello? Now why is it that people don't get it? People ask me, Sadhguru, how did you get all this, Sadhguru? When did you become a soil scientist? When did you become an environmentalist? When did you become an ecologist? I am not any of these things. I am not a soil scientist, I am not an environmentalist or ecologist, definitely not an activist. I am a worm on this planet. I have crawled on this planet for six and a half decades. I know what the hell is happening because it happens to me. Oh, we also lived on this planet? No, 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 no. Since, tell me truthfully, have you lived on this planet or have you lived in your own world that you create in your head? Where have you lived? Because you're living in your own world, which is not this world, this is a complete misuse of human cerebral activity. This is a complete misuse of human cerebral capability. Your problem is your brain. Hello? You remember about a year and a half ago or two years ago, unfortunately, a young lady in Hyderabad committed suicide, jumping off the fifth floor of her apartment on TV anchor. You must have seen that it was all over the television because she wrote a note. Nobody is responsible for my death, my brain is my enemy. It took millions of years of evolution, millions of years of research and development to give you a goddamn brain like this. And now you suffer it, and now it's become your enemy. And now all this is happening. Human intelligence has become a problem. You tell me, is intelligence a problem or a solution? Hello? It is the only solution. Hello? Intelligence is the only solution. But unfortunately, right now intelligence has become the biggest problem because if you had the brain of an earthworm, you would be very peaceful and spiritual also. <laughs> because so-called spiritual leaders in the country are going about saying, peace of mind is the ultimate goal of life. Yeah, 
such people will only rest in peace <laughs> If peace of mind is the only goal, if you had the brain of an earthworm, you would definitely be peaceful and you would also be eco-friendly. That also. Now, with such a big brain which took millions of years to manufacture, today you don't even know how to sit in one place with ease and ecologically you are a disaster, human beings. Why have we become like this? This is just this. This is the case of a potato farmer. You heard about this potato farmer? No. You're in Mumbai, you think potatoes come from where? <laughs> Swiggy, eh? <laughs> because they have never seen other… anything other than fried potato. <laughs> where did they see a raw potato? Ask the young people, have they seen a raw potato? No, they saw it only fried. <clears throat> so there was a potato farm. Hey, shall I tell you a story now? See, you need a certain attitude to get the story right. If I say once upon a time, you may say, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello? Once upon a time. Don't do the same thing for every sentence, okay? <laughs> Appropriate noises. <laughs> once upon a time, there was a potato farmer. And one day, he wanted to eat mangoes, season, you know. Tch. That's good <laughs> And he started looking for trees, mangoes, mangoes, mangoes. But you know, mango tree is obvious, it's hanging it all over the place. So he found the mango tree. But out of sheer habit, being a potato farmer, he started digging the ground for mangoes. When he found no mangoes, he became furious and dug furiously. After some time, the tree came down upon him. This is the case of humanity right now. All this has happened, not because there is some evil force sitting somewhere wanting to destroy this planet. There is no one person or one force or one organization wanting to destroy this planet. There is no such evil force anywhere. It's just you and me in pursuit of happiness and well-being. Hello? Yes or no? It is just you and me in pursuit of our happiness and well-being that we are digging the planet through and through. Have you ever been happy? You can tell me, it's okay, once in a way you can tell me. You've been happy. You've been unhappy? So whether happiness happened, unhappiness happened, it happened only within you, isn't it? So you must understand this, whether it's joy or misery, pain or pleasure, agony or ecstasy, happen only within you, isn't it? Everything that ever happened to you, pleasant or unpleasant, happened only within you. Or in other words, human experience is manufactured within you. Is that so? What is being manufactured within you should turn out the way you want, your factory. So there are many ways to look at it. One simple way to look at this is, this is a very complex chemical soup. Hmm? Very complex chemical soup. If I give soup making ingredients to all of you, same ingredients to all of you, do you believe you will come up with thirteen thousand soups exactly same or thirteen thousand varieties of soups? Some soups will be fantastic, some soups will be 
I can do without it. Some fruits will kill you, <laughs> various kinds. So the question is just this, this is the most sophisticated and complex chemical factory on the planet. Are you a great manager of this factory or are you a lousy manager of this factory? This is all there is. Because you are such a lousy manager of this factory, you're digging the whole planet upside down, thinking you will become happy by digging more. By digging more, it's not going to happen. Somebody was telling me, it seems some, uh, some thousand or a million light years away, there are three hundred planets, just like planet Earth with the same kind of atmosphere, some of them ten times larger than this planet. They all want to go there. I said, all the best, start the journey today. <laughs> if at least half the people go away like this, the other half may, be, may come to senses, but no. I said, see, three hundred is not enough. Even if you find eight billion planets and give one one planet to each of them, as long as they're in pursuit of their happiness, they will destroy these eight billion planets in hundred years' time for sure. Yes or no? Because what should happen within, if you seek here, you will definitely end up digging like hell. That's all that's happening. So this is not an evil force. Every one of us, knowingly, unknowingly, all of us partners in this destruction. The only way to turn this around is all of us become partners in the solution. There is simply no other way. Pointing fingers is not the way, accusing this one and that one is not the way, because every one of us have done this knowingly or unknowingly, isn't it? No, I am against, I am a climate change activist, I am doing this, I am doing that. Doesn't matter, these lights are on, something is burning somewhere, hello? Whether it's diesel or coal or nuclear or whatever, something is burning, isn't it? Every day, all of us, all the conveniences, whatever we are using, something is always burning. For that somebody is digging, it is like this, somebody has to do the dirty job for you. See, I want electricity in my house, somebody has to dig a hole in the earth to get the coal out of there, somebody has to build a thermal plant somewhere. They are doing the dirty job, we can say these people are evil people, but we are the consumers, isn't it? Hello? Every one of us, there's no exception. Whichever way you are living, one way or the other, we are consuming. So, this is not about blame game. This is not about being angry with somebody. This is not being about resentful about what somebody else has done. This is not an agitation. This is not a protest. This is an expression of our love and responsibility for the life that we are and the life that's around us, and the life that should be beyond us. There are many young people here, are there Generation Z people? Z. This scares me, oh there they are. Generation Z scares me, that sounds like the last generation to me. <laughs> Don't call yourself Z, call yourself A, B, C something or take numbers because it's infinite. <laughs> Alphabet's only twenty-six. Don't call yourself Generation Z, that's a dangerous place to go. But if we don't handle things right now, right now means right now. If we don't handle things right, when I say handle things right, Sadhguru, shall I go and fix my kitchen garden? That's very cute of you. Because I know your kitchen garden is just one pot in your apartment with one tomato hanging there. <laughs> Very cute. But that's not a solution. It's really sweet of you, but it's not a solution. Because today, fifty-one million square kilometers of land is being formed on the planet. If that has to change, our agricultural policies have to change. How did agriculture become like this? In the year 1918, a German scientist for the first time came up with nitrogenous fertilizer. 
people threw this on their land and boom, everything burst out like that. In India, there are many places where yields went up by three hundred percent. So this powder became the magic powder. You throw this, impossible things happen. It saved our lives also, okay? It saved us from famines, it has saved our lives. We are… many of us are alive today because of this magic powder. So don't talk against it, there is some other way to do it. So fertilizers we started using, yields started going up. We call this the green revolution in this country because this green revolution was unleashed when still the hangover of terrible famines was ruling our minds. In 1942, a, a famine in India took 3.2 million people. 3.2 million people dying in four months' time, the most terrible death. I'm sorry, because famine doesn't just kill you like that. It's not like a war, somebody shoots you in the head or blows you… blow you to bits. That's not how it works. This is slow fade, slowly, four to… three to four months, gradually people die. It's the worst way to die for a human being. And people do terrible things. As hunger takes over, people do terrible things. There are any number of recorded events across the world where parents have chopped off the limbs of their children and eaten the limbs to survive because they didn't want to kill the children. Imagine, suppose you or me had to do such a thi had to do such a thing and then your child grows up without two arms, how do you live with this? I'm saying we should never again drive humanity in the direction of a famine, ever because this is the worst possible thing that you can do to human beings. But this year, already now, because of Ukraine war, already two African nations have gone into famine. All predictions are saying in the next four months' time, four to six months' time, 350,000 children can die in these two countries. But World Food Pro Program, which spent nine billion dollars last year distributing food, this year they're asking for fifteen billion dollars, twenty-twenty-three they want twenty-two billion dollars. They already predicted at least six nations will go into severe famine in twenty-twenty-two. We always think it happens somewhere else. But wherever it happens, there is something called humanity within us which responds. Unless we close it, lock it up and throw away the key as many people seem to have done. Otherwise, when you lock up your humanity, it is not only gets locked up for somebody else far away, it gets locked up for even for you. Even you shall not experience your own humanity, that's the problem. If I lock up my humanity towards you, I… I don't want to feel even human towards you because I… Do, I hate you or I this or that or whatever, the problem with this is, even I shall not experience my own humanity. That is a serious problem. So, we are unfolding a world like this, where it is expected by 2032 to 2035, 3.5 billion people will be water stressed. Water stress is not new to our country. I'm not against movies and stuff, don't think I'm saying something against it. But I did not see too many movies later, at least the not made in Mumbai and made in South India kind of movies, I did not see much. But very early on when I saw, I remember from those old movies, always uh, these ladies will carry… carrying a water pot and swinging of course, I don't want to do that on stage. Uh, and she will sing a song, she will fall in love, romance will happen, because she's carrying an empty pot always. <laughs> it is also nicely decorated, but in the village, the woman who carries that pot is carrying eighteen to twenty kilograms on her head. If you see her, it will be shaking like this. 
unable to bear that weight. And she walks a mile or two miles or three miles to get this pot of water for her family. There is nothing romantic about it. She never sang a song, nor did she swing around, nothing like that happened. It's a terrible thing that a woman has to walk two miles or three miles to get one pot of water. She can't carry, carry twenty-five and come home. She to carry one pot of water, she has to walk two to three miles. This is water stress, that means there's no portable water anywhere around. Today governments are making special efforts to pipe water to every home, whatever, but there are issues behind that, that you can pipe water for some time, after some time there will be serious issues with that, because pipe doesn't produce water. Hello? Pipe doesn't produce water, pipe only delivers water. There has to be good water somewhere. Where is the water in a country like this? We have four percent of the world's land and seventeen point six percent of the world's population. This is Bharat. If you make all these people very conscious, very capable, very focused and disciplined, if that's possible to do, then this could be a miracle, 1.3 billion people. A focused, competent lot, boom. But if they're unfocused, undisciplined, unskilled, it's the biggest disaster unfolding. But whatever you want to do with them, whether they're skilled or unskilled, they have to drink water, eat food and breathe air. That right everybody has. Hello? Only skilled people shall we give them oxygen and don't give anything to me? No, everybody needs that. So where is the water? See, this is something it took me a lot to explain during Rally for Rivers, why I'm saying this is... It doesn't matter, I spoke to journalists for one hour, one and a half hours interview. In the end they wrote, Sadhguru wants uh, river linking. I said, river linking is murder of the rivers. Why will I talk about river linking? You're talking about river linking because they've done it in Europe, because they've done it in United States of America. What you don't understand is those rivers are glacier-fed rivers, ice melting and flowing as rivers. In India, only four percent of river water is glacier-fed, ninety-six percent is monsoon, just coming, it never comes too soon. Hmm? <clears throat> This monsoon water, the rain water that's coming down, in the last one hundred years the measurements show there is no decline. Actually, in 2021, we had thirty-seven percent more monsoon than normal. So there is no decline in the volume of water coming down. The spread has come down a little bit. The monsoons in sixties and fifties and sixties used to be anywhere between eighty-five to hundred and fifteen days. Now generally it's come down to seventy to ninety-five days. But the same volume of water is coming down. Mumbai people know this, all of you have a boat? <laughs> because the same volume of water is coming down in crushed amount of time. What used to be spread out, is now coming out like this. There are various reasons for this. We, I mean, there are technical reasons, let me not go there. But the same volume of water is coming. Only thing is, instead of percolating like this, it is flowing on the surface like this. Why that's happened is, to give you an example, in Kaveri Basin, I grew up around Kaveri. How I saw Kaveri? fifty years ago and what it is today, only forty percent of the river is left. Yes, only forty percent. Scientific studies say only f some thirty-seven percent reduction has happened because they are counting rainwater… rainwater season also. But if you s take different segments of time, 
only forty percent of the river is still flowing. For almost four and a half months, it doesn't even touch the ocean anymore. Because we have removed eighty-four percent of the green cover in the Kaveri River Basin. In the Ganga Basin, we've removed ninety-two percent of the green cover. We built Indian railways on it. And it took us fifty, sixty years to realize that we could make concrete sleepers. Hello? It took fifty to sixty years to realize we can just mold a concrete sleeper for the railways. We don't have to cut the trees. But we removed ninety-two percent in Ganga Basin. Ganga Basin accounts for twenty-five percent of India's, agri uh, India's geography and thirty-three percent of India's agriculture. That's what it is. I'm saying these things to you because we are seriously working towards a famine. We want a famine, we're missing it, because the last famine was uh, I think 1951 or 52, so it looks like we are missing it, we are working towards it. It's such a large population today, we were just 330 to 340 million in 1947, today we are 1.3 billion. Now if famine-like situation comes, not something that you and me want to witness or go through, hello? Because what is happening now, I know governments are planning, I know they're storing up in FCIs and all this stuff, all this is fine. But what you need to understand is, soil biodiversity is made like this. Right now on an average, according to UNFAO, twenty-seven thousand species per year are going extinct. So it's a slide, it's sliding down. But anywhere between next twenty-five to forty years, we don't know exactly when it'll happen. Somewhere between twenty-five to forty years, this slide will transform itself into a tumble. Once it starts tumbling, there is really nothing we can do. Some scientists predict when the tumble begins, in six years' time, about forty percent of the world's population can get wiped out, human population. Some who are a little more aggressive on these numbers say, in about six to eight years' time, sixty percent of the world's population can get wiped out. The problem is not death, the problem is how we die. That's a serious issue. All of us will die one day, that's not the issue. But how we die, how painfully we die, how things happen around us, this will be a collapse of civilizations. Because in Mumbai city, forty percent of the people have not eaten food for three days. What do you think? You think you can sing? You think you can make a movie? You think I can help people to meditate? Hello? You think so? It'll be a total collapse. Once certain number of people have no way to access food. See, right now, there are unfortunately still people poor enough not to be able to get food. But there is food in the land they don't have means to get it. That's a different situation. When there is no food, that's a completely different situation. So why am I here painting this dark picture? This is not about the dark picture. It is... People ask me, Sadhguru, why did you have to ride thirty thousand kilometers? You could have killed yourself. I said that was the whole idea. Without that killing myself idea, this wouldn't have worked. Because last thirty years I've been talking about soil in variety of ways. I've spoken to bureaucrats, I've spoken to ministers, I've spoken to many responsible people in the world. Everybody says, this is fantastic Sadhguru, what you're saying, very important, great, great, and they'll sleep. They'll sleep on it. So, I'm not a minister, I don't hold any governmental position, I don't have any or... you know, official authority of any kind. The only thing I have is people's goodwill. I thought that's the only thing I can play with. Maybe everybody does not understand, maybe more and more videos will come out because we've not had the time to put it out. You will see many, many, many situations were life and death for us, for me at least. Because the only way was if I risk my life, at least people will stand up and do something. Fortunately, they have. 2.8 billion people have responded in the world.
what me just flinging my life around is uh, playing yo-yo with my life is good enough for you or you want me to die for you to stand up and do something about soil. Make up your mind because really it's like that. I am not just trying to make it dramatic or emotional for you, I am telling you that is the reality of what we are right now. As a generation, we have a huge challenge in front of us, but we have a tremendous privilege that if we act now, we will be that generation which turned back from the brink of a disaster, not a generation which slept through and fell over. I'm saying these things like this with a certain emphasis, because humanity has this problem of walking into disasters and then grieving over it. For example, World War I happened, it was a terrible thing. So all the Europeans decided, we will never again fight. That was 1918. By 1940, they were ready to fight again in twenty-two years. World War II, as if it's a natural progression from one to two. After that, they decided never again we'll fight, United Nations, this, that, everything happened. Since then, how many wars have we fought? How many nations have we destroyed? How many million people have we killed like this? going on. And now, <laughs> I was uh, just appealing to all the European youth, at least take this stand, by 2025, you will create enough awareness in the world, cutting-edge technology should not go into military use. What we have, destruction capability is enough. What we have right now is enough. At least new technologies need not go into this, and create more and more efficient killing machines of various kind. If you hear the kind of weaponry that some of the top nations in the world are working, you just will wonder, what the hell is this about? What is it that they want to do? Really, what is it that they want to do, I can't understand. Because the kind of weapons that they're dreaming of to develop is just insane, total insanity. But that's power, that is the way to dominate the world. If you do not know this, this classified information came out some time ago. NASA was planning to bore a… with using nuclear weaponry, they want to put a hole into the core of the moon. You know, all of you singing right from childhood, Chanda Mama, whatever, whatever, they want to put a hole into it and make a donut out of it. Because in the core there is a metal which is hundred thousand times, hundred thousand times lighter than steel and much, much stronger than steel. So they want that metal. They want to go into the core of the moon. So I'm saying, what is it? What is this life about? For a few years that we are here, Yes, we want to live in some comfort, we want to enjoy a few pleasures, we want to be happy, we want to be well. There's a common human desire. But this is going to another place because we do not know how to employ our intelligence for our well-being, for our well-being. So 3.5 billion people going towards water stress means there will be a migration of at least 1.2 to 1.3 billion people will migrate in this world. When migrations happen, what suffering happens to families and people is untold, okay? If thousand people die, media will report thousand people died. Million people suffered, nobody writes about that. When unplanned forced migrations happen, women and children will take the worst always. If you go and witness what's happening in some of the cities in southern Europe, where young women from Africa are just coming and landing up, they don't know the language, they don't have any skills to survive in the society, they don't even have an ID. What happens to these young women is unspeakable. And whenever forced migrations happen, this is a natural consequence, I want you to just think, one billion people moving 
because they have no livelihood on the land where they are. If the land was rich, do you think they would go? If the soil was rich, would they leave this place and go to some unknown place with their women and children? Because they can't even grow the food for their family, that's why they are going. Now all this essentially is because, you know, there's an evolutionary problem. You know, some… the genetic scientists say, the difference between you and a chimpanzee in terms of DNA is only 1.23 percent. Is 1.23 percent a great percentage? Hello? Is 1.23 percent get you anything? No. But that is all the difference is. Physiologically, that is how close you are to a chimpanzee. But in terms of your intelligence and awareness, you're worlds apart from a chimpanzee and that's your problem. You have an intelligence for which you don't have a stable enough base. So this intelligence is doing terrible things. If you don't take charge of it, this could be… If you take charge of it, this could be the greatest solution. If you don't take charge of it, this is the worst problem that you will ever face. And that's what we are facing right now. Problem of human intelligence going berserk, not being able to employ our intelligence consciously. When you come to this level of intelligence as being human, you're supposed to function consciously. See, the way you're made is like this. For all creatures, I'm… I'm just… there's not exact numbers, but generally, for all creatures, nature has fixed ninety percent of their life. Only ten percent latitude for individual expression. Otherwise, they're all same. But with a human being, you have come unformed. Only ten percent is fixed by nature, ninety percent is in your hands, and that is the problem. This is the greatest freedom. You can be whichever way you want, you can make yourself the way you want, but now that has become the problem. Freedom has become the problem, intelligence has become the problem. Because freedom and intelligence are wonderful things only if you are conscious. If you are compulsive, both intelligence and freedom becomes terrible. Because right now I'm saying this in Mumbai because right now whatever you are compulsive about, you generally claim it is my freedom. Compulsiveness is not freedom, hello? Compulsiveness is slavery. Freedom means I'm conscious, I can do my life whichever way I want. If you could just think the way you want, right now, if you could just think the way you want and feel the way you want, would you be joyful? Why such a simple thing is not happening? You're not taking your faculties into your hands. Suppose it so happened, your right hand, forefinger, comes and starts poking your eyeball. We should do something about this finger, isn't it? Hello? We must tie it up, we must do plaster it or we must cut it, we must do something. Otherwise it's going to take the eyeballs out. Right now, this is the state of your intelligence. Your own intelligence constantly poking you endlessly, isn't it? Hello? Constantly poking you. But if we take half your brain out, suddenly you become peaceful. <laughs> yes, intelligence, which is the greatest gift that you have, you have made it into a big problem for humanity, both in terms of personal experience and the larger human activity. Intelligence has become the problem, can you beat this? This is the only solution, this is the greatest gift that we have, that we have more cerebral capability than any other creature on this planet. Isn't this the greatest gift? So if this has to become a gift, not a curse, we must create a conscious planet. There is simply no other way. <clears throat> if… Uh, if your body becomes pleasant, we call this health. You want it? I heard twenty-seven and a half people saying that.
From now on, I'll ask you a question, if you say yes, no, or you say nothing, I just bless you, okay? Pleasantness of the body is called health. You want it? If it becomes very pleasant, we call it pleasure. See, that's loud, huh? If your mind becomes pleasant, we call this peace. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it joy. If your emotions become pleasant, we call this love. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it compassion. If your very life energies become pleasant, we call this bliss. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it ecstasy. If your surroundings become pleasant, we call this success. No, no, wait. That was not a question. Because to create surroundings the way you want it, to make your surroundings pleasant, you need the cooperation of people who are around you, forces which are functioning around you, the times in which you exist, there's so many aspects. But to create pleasantness of the body, pleasantness of the mind, pleasantness of your emotions and energy is one hundred percent your business, huh? But to help you, you must be willing. This happened. One day, Shankaran Pillai called his three boys. <laughs> he called his three sons. I'm... I'm trying to speak. Don't feel insulted. I'm... I've not spent so much time in Maharashtra, so uh, I'm trying to speak like the local accent. He called his boys and said, you good for nothing fellows, do something good with your life. Some good thing you must do. Those boys, you know, Mumbai boys, father, what is good father? We don't know what is good. We don't know what good things are. You don't even know what is a good thing. Do something good. What, father, what is a good thing? Something, go, go out on the street, if you find an old lady, help her across the street. Some good thing you do. They went out. In the evening they came back, the first boy, he came, Shankaran Pillai asked, did you do any good thing today? Yes, father, as you said, I helped the old lady across the street. Very good boy, you done well. Then the second boy came after some time and uh, he asked, did you do any good thing? Yes, father, I helped a old lady cross the street. Oh, you also helped a old lady cross the street? Yes, father, you said it's a good thing, so I did it. The third boy came, he asked him, what did you do today? Did you any good... do any good thing? So he said, yes, father, I helped a old lady across the street. <laughs> what? All three of you, you found three old ladies like this? No, no, father, not just three of us, we also called our cousin Ramu. And together we helped one lo old lady across the street. You fools, to help one old lady, does it take four young boys to do it? Oh, father, you do not know these old ladies, how stubborn they can be. She just doesn't want to cross. <laughs> I am saying this story to you because <laughs> this happened in 1982. I was... Uh, yeah, once again, after so many years, I'm still on a motorcycle now. But I was riding and I was actively involved in some business. Very successful for those days. 
busy and uh, somewhere in between I found half an hour, I mean one and a half hours break in the afternoon. So in Mysore city, we had this problem that, uh, you know, when we are kids, if you want to trek, uh, trek, we go and trek in Chamundi hill. It's a small little hill, but when I was eight years of age, it was like Himalayas for me. So we climbed, we camped there. As we grew up, we cycled up, then we motorcycled up. We want to test our motorcycles, we are on the Chamundi hill. If you want to have a party, we are on the Chamundi hill. If we fall in love, we have to go to Chamundi hill. If we fall out, you have to go to Chamundi hill. <laughs> because all these people, uh, you know, those who think they have fallen in love, uh, they would have written SKP, loves TKP. <laughs> now when they fall out, they have carved it on the rock, they have to go and <laughs> break that rock. <laughs> All this. And if we had nothing to do, we go up Chamundi Hill. So in the afternoon, I have nothing to do, I didn't even think about it, where to go. Simply, my motorcycle just went up Chamundi Hill. I know the hill through and through, so I know where to go and where to sit. So I park and climb up a little bit and a big rock, a beautiful place. I went and sat there. Till that moment, I always thought, this is me and that is somebody else. I have no issue with somebody, but this is me, that is somebody else. Suddenly I did not know which is me and which is not me. I was sitting with my eyes open and I could not make out where is me, where is not me, because what was me was just like it had spilled all over the place. Then I thought this lasted for ten, fifteen minutes, but when I came back to my normal senses, Four and a half hours had passed, tears were streaming down my cheeks. Me and tears were impossible, but tears where my shirt is all wet and every cell in my body is exploding in ecstasy. I had like unbearable levels of bliss, it's almost like you want to just die right there, that kind of thing. Then to my closest friends when I ask, something is happening to me, I'm just blissed out all the time. Hey, come on, what did you drink? Come on, what did you pop? Oh, you found the mushrooms, where is it, where is it? I knew there was no point talking to anybody, there was no context for me. Then I experimented in so many ways and I discovered, if I keep my hands off my psychological process, every cell in my body gets blissed out. I experimented in so many ways and I thought, this is it, I have found the gold mine. Then I sat down and made a plan. There's no fool like a young fool, I'm telling you, those of you who are young. I was twenty-five and I sat down and made a plan. On that day, the world's population was 5.6 billion people. I made a plan in two and a half years' time, I will make the whole world blissful. Because who wouldn't want to be blissful? Nothing to do. If you just simply sit here, you explode. Who will not want it? Hello? Who will not want it? Oh, no, no, no. In the last, you know, it's not two and a half, it's been forty years, huh? Huh? In this, because of this motorcycle, half my beard is gone, but it's been forty years. <laughs> and incessantly, Every day, seven days of the week, three hundred and sixty-five days, eighteen to twenty hours a day, non-stop we've been working. Today people say we've touched a little over some 2.3, 2.4 billion people, but that's not my idea of the world. Ah, come on, don't clap at my failures. You try celebrating my failures, I'm lamenting to you that today the population is eight billion, and I know I will die as a failure, that is why for the save soil, I only ask for fifty percent of the population, will you make it happen? Yeah! I gave up the full population because of age and wisdom, now I reduce the population, three point five to four billion people. Out of eight, I'm asking you, all of you who are here, all of you have a phone with you? What uh, the smart kind or the dumb kind, what do you have? <laughs> smart. See, you call somebody smart only if they're smarter than you. 
and I'm glad you have a smart companion in your pocket. And this is a powerhouse. Uh, you can use it to send a few silly messages, it's okay with me, but not a whole day, okay? Few silly messages per day, all right. But rest of the time you must use this powerhouse because this is the first time, this is the very first time in the history of humanity that you can sit in your home and talk to the entire world. Many great beings have come, hmm? many, many great beings have come. When they came, if they spoke, even ten people could not hear them. Today, you can sit at home and talk to the entire world. When you have such a capability, when you have such a tool with you, if you don't make this happen, it just shows that you don't care enough. Will we make it happen? Yes! So not shouting this evening and going away and sleeping on it, you must keep it on. Our environment minister is here, till they make a clear policy, it's not his department, it's the agriculture department which needs to do it. But in this state, in the country, in the world, because soil ecology does not respect our state borders or national borders, it is life happening. It's an effulgent life happening across the world, microbial life, if you look at it, it's such a fantastic phenomena. It's a life phenomena happening at such a... in such a complex and tremendous way, but in such harmony, it's happening. This you cannot divide with national boundaries and state boundaries. States and nations are for the sake of administration. You cannot divide this planet like you cut a cake and take... I'll take my piece and go. This is not how the planet works. Life happens as a global phenomena and it's important that you become conscious enough to become that global phenomena. I am asking you, people talk about, what is that, uh, doctors without borders. Are you all beings without borders? This is very important. Your caste, your creed, your religion, your political affiliation, your nationality, your race, does not mean anything when it comes to life. These are all things that we create to manage a few social things. But when it comes to life, when it comes to existential issues, these things mean nothing. I want you to understand why soils... You know, I was at the... Uh, <laughs> at the UNCCD and also at the WEF, uh, there was something called as Great Narrative, to set the narrative for the World Economic Forum, I was there for three days in Dubai for that meeting. They asked me, Sadhguru, if there are three concerns about environment, what are those? I said, soil, soil and soil. They said, why? I said, because everything is from soil. Where the air that you breathe is from soil, the water that you drink is from soil, the food that you eat is from soil, your very body is soil. Sixty percent of your body is microbial life. Only forty percent is your parental genetics. I was in Sophia and this little girl, eight-year-old girl comes to me and says, Sudhguru, I want to do save soil, save soil, but my mother won't let me. I said, tell your mother she's only twenty percent <laughs> Only twenty percent rights she has, that's all she's given. Rest is microbial life, it's there for you to pick it up. The more you pick it up, the healthier and saner you will be, yes. Right now, many of you were, uh, you know, soaking, ingesting alcohol. Now you're also soaking in alcohol because virus, 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 virus. Uh, you need to strengthen the life process. It's very important. If this pandemic has not taught you that much, you think you can exist in isolation, it'll not work. Well, because it's so heavily populated, we have to take care about each other, that's a different matter. But you have to connect with life. You know, we have... Uh, now we have renamed it as Isha Rejuvenation. At one time it used to be called as Isha Yogic Hospital. A certain number of doctors from Detroit, uh, this is many years ago, about fifteen years ago, they came to visit us and uh, after three days of being there, 
My office calls me and says, Sadhguru, these uh, Michigan doctors are very angry, they want to leave right now. I said, what happened? Uh, we don't know, they're screaming, they want to go. I said, okay, please ask them to wait, I'll see them. So I came and I said, what happened? They said, it is all a lie. You told us there is a yogic hospital, we've seen the whole premises, there is no hospital here. Oh, I said, oh, the yogic hospital. I'd, on that day, I had about seventy-two or seventy-three patients. I said, come, I will show you. And I told them, see here in the garden, in the uh, vegetable gardens and other places, they're working. I don't want to waste the patients, I'm just making use of them. You give them a nice bed and a pretty nurse to handle them, you think they'll ever get well? <laughs> you… every day you put your hands into the soil, walk barefoot, be in contact with life around you, this system will become strong. Don't we see this, that most of the pandemic is in urban areas, rural areas generally is much more subdued simply because of their connection with land. At least do this much, if you have those two pots, put your hands in the pot, okay? It'll help. But that pot soil is separated from the rest of the planet, that is the only problem with that pot. So it's important, we cannot exist here as life without being connected to life, because life is happening as one large phenomena. You and me are not separate. If all the insects die tomorrow, all life on this planet will end in four and a half to six years, including you and me. If all the worms die, in two and a half to four years, all life will end, including you and me. If all the microbes die, right now we will all end, because sixty percent of your very body is microbial life. It's a phenomena beyond description. The top soil scientists are openly admitting they know less than one percent of the species present in the top soil. When you know less than one percent, you shouldn't mess with something, isn't it? So there is an economic aspect, there is a nutritional aspect. It is agriculture is a sensitive subject and the farm economy is so fragile. If you just shake it a little bit, it'll collapse. So it's very important, it has to be an incentive-driven policy and for such long-term policies to hap happen, Without people's support, without people's mandate, it will not happen. All of you must remember this. Governments are not elected to do fantastic things. They are elected to fulfill people's mandate. Where is the mandate? You must give that mandate. We are interested in the long-term well-being of our state and the nation. This mandate must come out clearly from sixty percent of the adult population in Maharashtra. Will you make it happen for me? Oh, shame, shame. You… you with this smart friend of yours in your pocket, you will do only in Maharashtra? We are around 2.7, 2.8 billion, we need four billion. Can I leave it in the hands of Mumbai to make this happen? Let's make it happen, save soil. Let's make it happen. Le, 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 le. This very body is soil. My body, your body, everybody is just soil body. Lele <laughs> 
Depleted soils will not quench the fire of hunger. Unquenched hunger can burn the very world. This is a generational responsibility. Save soil. Let's make it happen. cities and events everywhere. Just stay with the journey and let's make it happen. And also, happy birthday to Aditya Thakre tomorrow. We just hold him here for another two hours, it'll be his birthday. Thank you very much for being here.